Okay, so today's topic is, is it okay to date someone who is between 10 and 20 years younger than you? So, being that this is my own opinion, you know what I'm saying? Everything is from my point of view. I want to give you guys, you know, those who don't really know me like that, um, an idea of my upbringing. Okay. And it's just going to be really, really quick because my upbringing and my childhood story is for a whole another vlog okay um really the point of the matter is and like the main the most important factor is the fact that i come from a single parent home which i only had my mother my father was not involved in my life ever in no way shape form or fashion um so my mom had to be you know the the dominant one the aggressive one which is you know usually that male well she was my male and you know female figure you know that was all I had to look up to but you know I feel like all children need both parents to kind of have that balance in life and you know sometimes not having both parents can really affect a child you know it's sometimes in a traumatic way because it's almost like you're growing up like why doesn't my dad want me why my dad doesn't like me and then you spend sometimes some of us spend all our lives you know looking for that father figure or you know some kind of authority even though my mom you know she 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 gave me authority i had structure it just i hated it and it was you know i didn't have no one to run to i didn't have my dad to run to oh mommy's saying i can't do this mommy doesn't want me to do that you know even though my mom was doing the best that she could and protecting me and stuff like that i didn't have anyone else to run to so for me um I spent, you know, my years dating, looking for that male figure or that authority in men. And this is starting from like a young age. When I was in middle school, I already knew like the boys in middle school couldn't do nothing for me. Like I was a little faster than others because um, I don't know why. I was just, you know, I came from the hood. I, would, you, I, I came from the hood and I started going, to, we moved to like a predominantly white neighborhood so I started going to predominantly white schools which was like Forest Hills Elementary in Coral Springs, Ramblewood Middle in Coral Springs, I went to Douglas High and Parkland like these are all predominantly white schools so you know coming from the hood I was a little bit faster than the girls there and um or you know just I was just different and I knew this from a young age and you know dating the boys and high school and stuff like that I knew that nah y'all can't do nothing for me like I didn't want any of the boys in school like I flirted with them and stuff but I didn't want them by the time I was 13 I was already running away like I told you like my mom was extremely strict she was on my ass like white on rice I couldn't do nothing couldn't do too much like you know what I'm saying? And she was coming from a good place, but I hated it at that age. And I started running away. I started hitting the streets. But I was going to the streets of Fort Lauderdale, which is, you know, I'm going back to the hood. You know, coming from this, now I've been in this white neighborhood for a minute. I'm running away. I'm going back to the hood. Go back to the hood, you know, you're seeing the dope boys, the ones coming up, the boys with the cars, the boys shooting dice. You know what I'm saying? And it was just different. And they getting money, you feel me? And I was kind of popular. I've been popular since I was like 13. I'm kind of popular. So, you know, I was able to be like, wait, hold up. I'm having my way. You feel me? So I'm 14 years old in the streets, okay? Um, running away from home. Um, as far as like getting money, I had homegirls. I would stay at their house and, you know... And that's how I was able to live. Like, even sometimes I would stay in abandoned apartments. Like, I was doing all this just so I don't have to go home. Um, anyway, so at a young age, I already knew that I was attracted to men that can do for me. And mostly the men that could provide for me, you know, the, the little dope boys that I was attracted to, they were like 19, 20 years old, and I was 14. Um, I ended up meeting my baby daddy I was 14 my baby daddy was 24 like that's a big difference and I feel like and you know at that time I was in love and it was right like I'm grown I could do this now I'm going from dating and you know dealing with boys that are 18 19 to my baby daddy who's 24 my baby daddy already had a car 
um, you know, he was he was doing his thing. He had he had his little stuff going on. He was making money. Um, so my baby daddy like starts taking care of me, starts like showing me the ropes, and kind of was like my father figure. Like he's the reason I started getting my nails done. He's like making me get my nails done every week. He started buying me. Von Dutch was extremely popular at the time, so he's buying me all the Von Dutch stuff. So when I was like, whenever I did go to school, because a lot of times I was skipping school. Whenever I did go to school, you know, I'm fly. I'm pulling up in my Von Dutch, my little Gucci stuff. I'm driving my baby daddy car. My baby daddy dropping me off. Like I was the shit. And at this point, you know, after a while, I move in with my baby daddy. This man is 24. I am 14, okay? Now, I know a lot of people are going to say, where was your mom? By this time, I had already been in and out the juvenile home. My mom chasing me all over the streets. You know, I just would not go home. I was very rebellious. And, um, you know, my mom didn't know nothing about my baby daddy. I moved, I ended up moving in with him after, you know, leaving from jumping from home girl house to home girl house or sleeping in abandoned apartments. I finally meet my baby daddy. He has his own, like he has a house and I start staying with him. I'm 14. He's 24. Now, what I can say is that I did lie to my baby daddy when we first met. I lied and told him I was 18 and it was kind of, I'm not defending him or nothing, but it was kind of could have been believable because I never had a curfew. I never had to go home because keep in mind, I was running away. You know what I'm saying? I'm staying with my homegirls. There's no authority. There's no structure. Their parents is like, we able to come and go as we please. So, um, you know, I don't have to go home. I don't have nobody to answer to. I'm not going to school. So it kind of was a way for him to believe that I was 18. But I know like the way I talked and mentally and a lot of things that I didn't know like this man had to teach me how to clean my vagina like my baby daddy is the one like nah you gotta do it like this and you gotta do it like this and you gotta use this you know what I'm saying like that should have been a red flag like this girl cannot possibly be 18 19 years old like she's claiming okay but whatever um maybe he did maybe he didn't know okay there was no reason for him to believe that I'm anything other than 18 so now I move in with my baby daddy. We're staying together. And, like, I'm willing to do whatever for this man. Like, if he would have asked me to go to the strip club and be a stripper and bring him back all my money, all his money, that's what I was doing. You feel me? But he wasn't into that. My baby daddy was a scammer. And he was into using the ice picks to break in people's cars. So, you know, because this man is buying me clothes, he's giving me a place to stay, let me drive his car, you know, he's acting as a father figure, I'm willing to do whatever. So now I'm riding with him, going to look for cars to bust their windows to get the purses and shit. Then I'm going the next day to ride with him through the bank lines to act like I'm somebody else on these credit cards and, and IDs and shit. Like, it was crazy. So now, you know, I'm not 14 no more. Now I'm 15. Now I'm riding through these lines with my baby daddy. I'm calling in the credit cards. Um, I'm going with him to break in cars and everything. That is like crazy in itself. If we ever would have got caught, which one time we was going through a bank line, they must have called the police. The police, would, they, they, as soon as we left the bank line, it was like the police was coming in to get us. My baby daddy put them on a high speed chase. He had a Land Rover at the time put him on a high-speed chase, and ran the goddamn Land Rover into the goddamn tree. Like, we could have both been dead. By the grace of God, we got away. Um, but that just goes to show, like, my love and my loyalty to him at 15, 14 years old, he could have had me doing anything because I was easily impressed. I had these clothes. I got this car. I got this older boyfriend. I'm getting my nails done. Like, life is great. Like, y'all couldn't tell me nothing. Okay, every that that's the way the story is building from 14 to 15. Now we're going to get to, like, when I'm 16. So now when I'm 16, I'm still living with this man. But I'm kind of going, I'm seeing ways about him. Like, he's cheating on me with this grown-ass lady. Like, I'm 15, 16. The lady was, like, um, 30. Her name was V. I used to go through his phone and see him texting and calling this lady. And, um, I would, you know, I'm young. I would call her, play on her phone, curse her out, whatever the case was. But, you know, I start realizing, like, I'm pretty much just a sex slave. Or, you know what I'm saying? He had kids. He had two kids. And... I was, I was the one, I, he would leave, he would get the kids from the baby mamas and act like he watching the kids, but really he was leaving me home with the kids. So this started becoming like 
reoccurring like a consistent thing where we wasn't doing anything he wasn't taking me out i barely was going to school no more i was just babysitting and getting fucked so you know i'm 16 i ain't got a care in the world it's just like all right baby daddy this is what you want me to do this is what I'm going to do because you're doing all this stuff for me. But, you know, by the time I'm 16 and I'm just going through all this stuff in life, I start missing my mom. Start missing my mom, show up at her house. It was a big old thing. Um, you know, it was a very emo it was very emotional and stuff like that. Um, but I still didn't move back in with my mom. I still stayed with my baby daddy. I end up getting pregnant. I go to the to the um it was like Planned Parenthood or something. I fill out all the paperwork for Medicaid. I'm so young and retarded that, you know, I'm going to see my mom throughout my pregnancy. But on the paper, I'm trying to, I'm hiding it from her. On the paperwork, I put my mom's address instead of putting my baby daddy's address where I'm living at. But I'm still trying to hide the pregnancy from my mom. Now, I know everybody's going to be like, how are you going to hide a pregnancy from your mom? When I was, you know, first of all, I had been running away for so long. So for my mom to notice different transitions, it would have kind of been kind of hard number two i was really really small when i was pregnant with my son i was extremely small then i also was a tomboy so me wearing oversized nike shirts or oversized adidas shirts with the baggy shorts and stuff that was normal but that's what i would wear whenever i would go see my mom or visit my mom so my mom didn't know i was pregnant until i was six months one day i go visit my mom and she's like kanisha you got something to tell me and i'm like no and she's like, well, these came to the house and it shows like all the Medicaid stuff and it shows that I'm pregnant or whatever the case is. So I'm like, damn, excuse me. So my mom finds out that I'm pregnant by, she don't know who it's by yet. So now, obviously, my mom is extremely concerned. I'm a 16 year old girl. I'm pregnant. I've been running away. She doesn't know who the baby daddy is. Like, this is really, my mom, and one thing about my mom, she's going to get to the bottom of it. And I don't know how, I don't know if she went through my phone or what, but she finds out about my baby daddy. She finds out that he's 10 years older than me. So my mom calls my baby daddy's mom. How my mom got her number, I don't know. So she lets her know, like, look, my daughter is pregnant. My daughter is, I believe I was 16 going on 17 when I found out that I was pregnant. And she lets her know, and she's like, your son is 10 years older than my daughter or whatever. So that's how my baby daddy, like, Fit, like technically really found out that I was only 16 and I was 14 when he met me like I said it was really no other reason for him to kind of believe or think that I was anything other than 18 because I had my own schedule I didn't have to go home because I was running away from my mom um I would go to school but I lied and told him I was a senior and stuff like that but I wouldn't go to school like on a consistent basis like I was skipping school a lot and I lied and told him I was a senior but I feel like he knew like my and he knew that he was controlling me he knew that he I would do whatever that he asked me to do by the grace of God thankfully he wasn't into pimping thankfully you know what I'm saying he wasn't into sex trafficking or none of that he was into his scamming shit which is still bad because Man, I could I could be doing years in prison doing some shit that I don't even know nothing about just because I want to be loyal to this grown-ass man. Like, crazy. Now, being out in the streets and running away from home, you know, I definitely was a tough cookie. Um, I, I went through a lot. I had some crazy experiences. But like I said, that's a whole nother vlog. Um... At that time, you know, I thought I was grown. I thought I knew what I was doing. Um, like I said, by the grace of God, thank God, you know, a different, you know, I didn't get involved in crazier things than what I've been through. And I'm still here to be able to share my story. Um, do I believe my baby daddy knew that I was younger than 18? I, I don't think in the beginning he did, but after a while, you just knew. Like, there was nothing about me. I may have thought at that age in my brain that I was grown, but there was nothing about me that gave off grown. Like, nothing. Like, you could tell simply by the, the TV shows that I was watching. You know, at that age, 14, 15, 
you know, we're not engaging in, in things that a 21 year old or a 20 year old or even an 18 year old is engaging themselves in. We're not impressed by things that a person that's 18 to 24, like I'm at home, 14, 15, I'm watching Sister, Sister. I'm cool with watching cartoons. Like me and his kids, we watching cartoons, having the time of our life. You know what I'm saying? Like, to me, those were red flags. The way that I talked, um, there was a lot of things that I just didn't know that I feel like a man, a grown man, 24, that's 10 years my senior, he knew. Especially he was dating older women, you know what I'm saying? Like, he knew the difference. I feel like he just wanted to have me as a goddamn sex slave. He wanted to manipulate me. My baby daddy started beating on me, like, right during my pregnancy, he would like beat on me if I didn't do something that he said or if he told me to iron his clothes and it wasn't ironed properly or like he would just beat me. My baby daddy would beat me like so bad and I didn't have nobody to call on. I didn't really grow up with like a lot of friends um, and like I said, I was running away from my mom and I just really mis mistaken. I had mistaken him beating on me with love. I felt like that meant that he cared, you know what I'm saying, um, but the way that he was beating on me, no woman, let alone no child, should be beaten on like that, I mean, like, one time I was pregnant, and I came home late, and I don't know why I came home late, I, probably, I, I know, I remember I was going to the corner store, like, my baby daddy was so jealous, though, that if he seen or heard anybody talking to me, he would beat on me, like, he won't say nothing to the man, he'll beat on me, if I came home too late from school, like, you know, like I said, he would let me drive his car. If I came home too late from school, he'd be like, oh, you was out there fucking with one of them little boys, wasn't you? You was out there fucking with them little boys, and he would beat the shit out of me. I ain't talking about, like, regular pulling, choking me up against the wall. I'm talking about punching, dragging me down the hallway of the house. You know what I'm saying? And But then afterwards, he would want to have sex. It was like it turned him on. Like, I'll be in the room crying, mad, upset, and here he come baby I'm sorry kissing on me and stuff like that and then wanting to have sex I feel like now you know looking back at it that him beating on me and me being you know in a vulnerable state or not having nobody not being able to call nobody for help no parents no nothing that it just it turned him on like it literally like did something to him so let me get back to this story. So now I'm like 16 and I'm pregnant. I come home late. Um, I went to the store and it had to be like, I don't know, somebody called him and told him something or whatever. It wasn't that big of a deal to me. It wasn't a big deal at all. But I get in. This man is livid, like livid. He starts beating on me and he takes the iron. He takes the hot iron and he puts it to my face while he's strangling me. He was like, I'll burn you. He's screaming. He's yelling and he got the iron to my face. Like I can feel the fucking heat when I say I was scared shitless I am scared shitless and I believe that was the last straw for me that I started feeling like damn I need my mom or I need to get out of this situation so that's when I started you know going to visit my mom and then my mom ends up finding out I'm pregnant then she finds out he's 10 years older so she gets in touch with his mother now they know that like there's no mistaking oh she's 18 or she, nah, she can't be younger than 18. No, now they know that I am 16 years old and he knows that I'm not 18. Okay, he didn't care. When he found out, he did not care. Um, then, okay, let me back up a little bit. When I when I found out I was pregnant and at like four months when I, he started, he was cheating on me and I'm seeing everything, I told him that I didn't want to have the baby. When I say my baby daddy cried, like I'm talking about literal tears please have this baby i want you to have my baby mind you he has two two daughters already prior that he only sees you know here and there when he has them he was making me babysit he wasn't spending no time with them but he's like please i want you to have my baby you better not get rid of my baby da -da 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 -da. cool i'm all I'm, I'm in love i'm 16 okay i'm gonna have your baby mind you this man done cried a million times throughout our relationship like it was like now that I look back on it like it was so weird the man was crazy and I just was taking that like I don't even know what kind of behavior that is um I'm just thinking he's crying 
He loves me. He's beating on me. He loves me. I'm feeling all like accomplished. Yes, you know, I got, I'm pregnant by a man who's older. He got a car. He doing his thing. Yes, I'm 16. I'm a, he love me. I'm going to have his baby. Yes, I'm going to be living a good life. Like the farthest from the truth. But you know, when you 16, you naive, you, you don't know no better. You, you, you ain't experienced nothing to know nothing. Okay. And he knew that. So there was another time where I threatened him that I was going to get rid of the baby. And he was mad. That was another time while I was pregnant that he beat the shit out of me. Like, I better not threaten him again. And I better not get rid of his fucking baby. I get rid of his baby. He going to kill me. All type of craziness. But when I turned six months and he put that iron to my face, that was like the last straw. Like, I needed my mama. And it's so crazy because all these years I'm putting my mom through pure hell. I'm stressing her out, driving her crazy. And now finally I'm realizing I need my mom. So after, you know, she finds out I'm pregnant, she tells the my baby daddy's mom that I'm not of age. My baby daddy doesn't care. And then obviously, like by the time I was six, seven months, it's just too late. Like I know what I'm having. I'm having a boy. Like I'm in, I'm become attached to my baby in me. There was no more talk about getting rid of my baby. Like, that wasn't even an option for me. You know what I'm saying? And even though my mom didn't have it like that, we we were, you know, we were struggling family. It was like, okay, we got to make room for it, for for this baby. And, and from then on, my mom had my back. Um, my baby daddy started doing, cra just cheating on me like crazy. So I end up moving back in with my mom, pregnant. And so, like, when I look back on... Um, uh, my childhood and everything that I've been through with my baby daddy and when I read stories or see stories of social media from you know other young girls who are getting taken advantage of by grown men um, it definitely does something to me is definitely a trigger point for me because it's like you want to save these girls like I wish I could go back and do it all over again and, and not try to rush to leave home. Um, I'm sorry. Not try to rush to leave home and, and, and grow up so fast. Uh, I'm sorry. I feel like, you know, I just wanted to touch on this subject because there's so many little girls out there who are just in a rush to grow up or just feel like their family is not perfect and um they want to run away they want to hit the streets and it's like everyone's not blessed to not um to you know not get in messed up situations where you're getting pimped or where you're getting sex trafficked or you're getting beaten um like um a lot of this to me it starts from you know, broken homes, broken families, or, you know, little girls who don't have their dads. Um, and, you know, as you grow older, that you can't always blame it on that. And you, we have to go through life and we have to grow. And as long as you grow and then you're able to understand, you did the best that you could with, you know, what you had. And at that time, you thought it was right, but it wasn't right. Um, I just feel like little girls are easily to be manipulated when they're like 13 14 15 by grown men and grown women um but like i said it all starts nine times out of ten those stories you hear are from kids that come from the hood kids that come from struggling families or kids that come from you know single parent homes um so when we talk about age gaps and stuff like that like me personally, I know from experience, I know from trying to jump off the porch too early or trying to be grown too fast. Like I put myself through so much unnecessary stuff. I took my own childhood away thinking that my mom was mean or thinking that my mom was too strict when really all she was trying to do was protect me from everything I put myself through. <laughs> like. If I could take it all back, I swear to God, it, especially my childhood. But, you know, 
then sometimes I kind of feel like if I didn't go through all of that, I wouldn't be the woman that I am today. But yes, going through that, and there's a lot more that I'll share at another time that I could possibly have not been here possibly been dead you know possibly been in a mental ward like just it's so much negative stuff that could have happened to me and by the grace of god it didn't but not all little girls are, are this lucky and i think for me i'm just i'm so emotional because it's just a sad situation and like me being an adult now and having my own child like I put my mom through so I put my mom through so much stuff that I wish that I could just take back all the pain that I caused her like all the stress that I caused her like I try and I work so hard every day to try to make up for that like my only goal in life is to make my mom happy because I feel like I wasted so much time like I took a lot from her she didn't get to teach me to cook she didn't get you know to, to teach me things that a mother should teach a child because I thought that I was grown I didn't want to be under her roof because I thought that she was strict I'm trying to hold myself together for the sake of this vlog um with that being said I just urge like all the young girls, if you don't have no one to talk to, like, in your household, find someone to talk to. Find someone who can help you, whether it's, if, you, if you're not in school, you know, there, there's programs. There's different, there's ways to reach out to someone for help. Like, don't be so quick to jump off the porch. Don't be so quick to be grown. Like, you have your whole life ahead of you. These men... Especially if you're dating a man that's 10 or if you're 14, 15 and you're dating a man that's well over his 20s. These men do not mean you no good. Like there's no amount of money in the world that can give you back your childhood. Like I didn't get to ex like my high school. I was running the streets. I was already going, you know, to all age clubs and not that if I was at home, I probably I wouldn't do that anyways. But there was a lot I didn't get to experience in high school. I didn't graduate. I didn't get to walk across the stage. I didn't even ever think about college. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's so many important moments in life that I missed because I, I rushed my life. I tried to rush being a woman. And Lord knows I was not ready yet. So that's just my message to young women. Do not rush to be grown. You know, leave these older men alone and just enjoy your childhood and that's what i preach to my son this is like i'm i'm heavy on my son enjoy every moment because one day you're going to look back and you're going to feel bad especially if it's all because you just wanted to be wrong now the other half of this is dating someone 10 or 20 years your senior when you're 20 years old or you're 25 years old so if you're like 20 dating someone that's 40 or if you're 25 dating someone that's that's um 45 is that a problem um to me i feel like personally if you're 21 and you come you know it, it depends on your upbringing if if you had a rough upbringing you didn't have any parents um, you come from the hood, you come from the struggle, and you're just looking for authority, and you run into someone who doesn't have that positive impact on you, that are 10 and 20 years older than you, then yes, it's a problem, because mentally, you're not able, you're, mentally, you're able to be finessed, Men mentally, you're able to be put in fucked up situations, so it's like, yes, legally, you may be grown, but mentally, because of everything you've been through and everything you haven't been through yet, you know, you're not able to, you know, there's men who have negative agendas, okay? You might run into a man that's a drug dealer and now he got you moving weight. You don't know nothing about it. You just want to be a ride or die for your man. This is your, your father figure. He's acting like he loves you. He's doing things that your parents and other people don't do. So now you hitting the highway, trafficking for this man. Then you go to prison for life about something you know nothing about. Or you get you a pimp who 
Now he put you in a club. You know what I'm saying? Not all men have positive agendas. So, and now if you're dating someone that is 10 or 20 years your senior and you're 20 or 30, so they're like 40 or 50 and they have the right agenda, you know, you're grown enough to, you know, you're able to, you're, you're grown enough to make the right decisions and, and follow this guy, this man or this woman to lead you in the right path. Um, I feel like a lot of it has to do with your upbringing. If you're someone who come from, you know, two family members, um, you're mature, not even about your family, it's your mentality. If you're mature enough, you know what I'm saying, to let someone lead you the right way and not immature to let someone lead you in the wrong path. I feel like if you're 20 and you're dating someone that's 40, and they have things that are going on in their life. They have their life together. They have businesses or they've been through stuff and they're trying to show you. They're maybe maybe you're still kind of immature trying to figure out your way in life and they're helping you. Then, yeah, I feel like at 20, that's a big difference than someone dating someone that is 10 or 20 years their senior at 14. And you're dating a 24 or 34 year old. You know what I'm saying? Um, Then the man or the woman is fucking sick. But... If you're 20 and 21, you're grown. You know what I'm saying? You're figuring out life. And as long as you, if this man or this woman is leading you in the right way and they're helping you and they're showing you things, you know, I, I don't feel like there's any problem with dating someone that's older. Hell, most situations, most marriages in America, somebody older, the man either 10 or 20 years older than the woman or the woman the, or the woman is 10 or 20 years older than the man. Like nine times out of 10, most marriages or most relationships, somebody older. You feel me? Somebody got to be older because it can't be the blind leader the blind. Somebody got to know what they doing. You feel me? Rarely do you see two people dating and they're like, oh, yeah, we the same age. It's very rare. But, however, so to answer your question, do I think someone, is it okay to date someone who is 10 or 20 years your senior? It depends on the person. It depends on their maturity or their mentality. Um, and it depends on the age. I believe if they're 20, 21, and they're dating someone 10, 20 years their senior, you know what I'm saying? It's a part of life. They're grown. They can make their decisions. But not if you're 14, should you be dating someone that's 20, 35. No. So, in conclusion... My answer to that question, y'all got it already. It just depends on the mentality and it depends on the age and the age difference. You feel me? Um, I just hope that me sharing this, I just had to, you know, being that this was a situation on the internet that kind of involved me. Um, I just had to share my perspective. Again, this is my opinions. This is based on my own experiences in life. Not everything I say might be fitting for you or you might be not believe that it's right or you know what i'm saying and that's okay because we're grown enough to be able to have our own point of views that's the the reason of me being me and you being you but yeah hopefully i i helped someone out or you know if anybody needs any help any tips whatever y'all free to hit me up